And if you look closely at these fibers or the fiber orientation of the muscle, the fibers are going straight up and down. Welcome to the Anatomy Lab, everyone. Today we're talking about six pack abs and why all of you can have a six pack. Now, this is obviously gonna be a little bit different than your typical six pack video because we're gonna use cadavers to show this muscle. And more importantly, talk about the layers you have to go through to even visualize it at the gym, the beach, or more importantly, during your personal flexathons. And also two factors that you can actually control with the six pack. We'll address that, how this muscle functions and why we choose certain types of exercises to make this thing stronger. So let's do this. Saying that everyone can have a six pack is building from the foundation that everyone has the muscle that forms the six pack called the rectus abdominis. Now I know we're more concerned about seeing it and you don't really consider somebody having a six pack unless you can see the muscle, but hey, we've all checked that first box of at least having the muscle. But there's something about the structural features of this muscle that makes people all excited about it. So let's take a look at the cadaver and go over some of those features. So you can see we're looking at an anterior view of the abdominal wall. On the left side, we've exposed the rectus abdominis. Now I just wanna mention why this thing is called the rectus abdominis. Rectus means straight. And if you look closely at these fibers or the fiber orientation of the muscle, the fibers are going straight up and down and rectus meaning straight, abdominis, pretty good name. Now the other feature that people love about this muscle is that it's segmented into blocks. And that's why it gets nicknamed the six pack, but most people actually have eight blocks. And if you take a look, we have these little intersections here. And these are truly called tendinous intersections or tendinous inscriptions. And again, most people have three intersections here, but what that does is creates one, two, three, and four different blocks that make up the rectus abdominis. One other thing that's interesting about those tendinous intersections is they vary as far as how they look or how they're oriented. Some of them have more of a slanting orientation or oblique orientation. Some can be more straight across, but again, that varies from person to person. Now, those are the typical features that we get all excited about when we see the rectus abdominis. But how many layers do we have to go through to see this thing? On the cadaver here, you could see that we exposed it on the left, but on the right, there was this white connective tissue that we removed in order to see it on the left side. This white connective tissue is referred to as the rectus sheath. And this rectus sheath is pretty awesome. This rectus sheath is related to the muscles on the sides here. Now, if you're concerned about the rectus abdominis and the six pack, you've probably thought about the obliques or worked out the obliques at some point in your life. And those are the muscles on the lateral body wall. Now, those are sheet-like muscles too, and the muscle fibers end about where the rectus abdominis starts. Again, on the cadaver, this is about where your obliques would end. You can't see them very clearly because we haven't finished the dissection on the lateral side here, but this is about where they would end. That's the muscle or the meaty part, but they have a sheet-like tendon that continues over the rectus abdominis, and that's what this rectus sheath is. This is a continuation of the tendon of the obliques and the transversus abdominis. And what's really cool is you gotta think about it coming from both sides. That sheet comes over and covers the rectus abdominis and it meets in the middle. And where it meets in the middle, it creates this straight up and down band, which is another structural feature we love about the rectus abdominis. This band is called the linea alba. Let me show you on the cadaver here. This is that central line that you see on people with the six pack muscle. And this comes up and down vertically and it's just the connection of the rectus sheath from the right and the rectus sheath from the left, which is again, is the tendons of those lateral body wall muscles and it attaches in the middle here. Now, a little bit of an FYI on this particular cadaver, this rectus, or I'm sorry, this linea alba, but by the way, linea alba just literally translates to linea means line, alba means white, but this one is expanded. And this is actually when it gets pulled apart too far and called rectus diastasis or diastasis recti. And that's just essentially when the rectus abdominis muscle pulls a little bit too far away. This can happen from a buildup of body fat underneath. It can also happen to women a lot during pregnancy. We actually talk a little bit about this in our hernia video if you wanna check that out, but only after you finish this one. So a quick checkpoint. 
Yes, all of us have the muscle that forms the six pack called the rectus abdominis and all of its cool features that we all geek out about. And then we saw the first layer covering it up called that rectus sheath here. Now, that is one layer we have to consider about seeing through in order to see this muscle, but there are still three other layers on top of the rectus sheath that influence how well we can see the six pack. So in order to do that, we're gonna use a different cadaver dissection to illustrate those different layers. So to the other cadaver. So what are these other layers that we have to go through in order to see the six pack muscle? Now, as I mentioned earlier, we came over here for a reason to show a cool dissection. And so let's orient you to this dissection that we nickname our chest plate dissection because of the anterior thoracic or chest wall. You can see the sternum here. We've got the ribs and even continuing down to the anterior or the front of the abdominal wall here. Here we've exposed two of the blocks of the six pack or the rectus abdominis muscle. On the left side, we've got the rectus sheath fully covering the six pack muscle in all of its glory. And even on the right side, we're covering up the superior aspect of this rectus abdominis or again, the six pack muscle. Now, one quick thing I just have to address here. We did not keep the belly button to be creepy. This is for a frame of reference and why we're here to show you the layers we have to go through in order to see the rectus abdominis. So the first layer we're gonna address is the top layer of the skin that we call the epidermis, obviously the most superficial layer of the body or in this case, the skin. And the next layer down is the dermis here. But if I pinch here, I'm pinching both the epidermis and the dermis. The majority of that tissue that I'm holding in the probe there is the dermal tissue though. And then we move on to the third layer down, which is the hypodermis, also known as the subcutaneous tissue. Now this is made of adipose tissue, which is a fancy pants name for fatty tissue, which is going to come back in our discussion in just a second. We have to go to layer four, which we already have met before, but that's the rectus sheath here underneath the hypodermis. So think about that. The muscle is the fifth layer down. We have to go through four layers before we can even see this muscle. The epidermis, the dermis, the hypodermis, also subcutaneous tissue, and then the rectus sheath. Now, earlier I mentioned there were two variables that we had control over. And so that means there's three things that we have no control over when we're talking about this five layer plan. And let me go a little bit more into detail with that. The epidermis and the dermis, we're not gonna change the thickness of that. We have no influence over that. We go down to the hypodermis and yeah, we're gonna have some discussion about our control over this layer. The fourth layer down, which is the rectus sheath, again, no control over. But then when we get down to the rectus abdominis, can we control how big or how robust that muscle is? Absolutely. So let's start with that hypodermis and the control we have over that. You can see here, it's about, yeah, about a half inch thick, but it can obviously be thinner and really slender, or you could say like the bodybuilders, or even up to inches thick in certain individuals. But everybody wants to know how thick or what body fat percentage do you have to be at in order to see the six pack? People want this magic number of like, you can see the six pack guaranteed at 15.299999% of body fat or at 10.35. But it's just not how it works because there are some variables with body fat percentage from individual to individual. And what I mean by that is not everybody pulls fat from the same area exactly when you lose body fat percentage. It's not like you can squeeze everything and be like, just take it from my abdominal wall when I'm losing weight, not from my butt or my hips or anywhere like that. And based on genetics and even gender, there's some differences on where your body might preferentially pull fat from. Now, some people might say, you know, if you're working your six pack muscle, that's gonna tell your body to pull fat from that area. And there's just not enough concrete evidence to make that claim. Again, it just comes down to eventually, as the body fat percentage goes lower, you're going to see certain muscles better and eventually the six pack. So even though nobody can give you an exact percentage of body fat to see the six pack muscle, I can give you some generalizations. Six packs can shine through a little bit or at least kind of squeak through to see the light in the mid teens. Now you'll be, I'm sure, shocked to know that there's also some variables that influence that but that is the other variable that you can potentially control with how robust this muscle, the rectus abdominis is based on your workout routine. So what I mean by that, if the muscle is a little bigger, a little more robust, it's likely to shine through or be a little bit more visible or easier to see at a little bit more of a higher body fat percentage than say if the muscle was all wimpy and flaccid and just not very strong and frankly just 
never worked out. So again, because I love to review things, control what you can control. How robust the muscle is and how thick the hypodermis is. But going back to how robust the muscle is, we should talk about what this thing can do and why people choose certain exercise routines to work this muscle out. So why people choose certain exercises to work the rectus abdominis is based upon the muscle's function. Now that may sound kind of obvious, however there's still confusion sometimes on how this muscle exactly works and what exercises I should choose and can I choose exercises that maybe target the upper rectus versus the lower rectus? So to alleviate that confusion, we're going to go over some of the details of what this muscle is designed to do and how it mobilizes the skeleton. And we have Jeffrey to help us with this, as well as my rubber band. So we're going to use this rubber band to represent the fiber orientation of the rectus abdominis on Jeffrey. Now, of importance here is this idea that most skeletal muscles attach from one point of the skeleton to another. And when the muscle contracts, it pulls those two points closer together. So let's look at those points on Jeffrey here. If you look at his rib cage here, you can see some blue markings that we've put on on the ribs here, and then also a blue marking on the xiphoid process. These are attachment sites for the rectus abdominis, the superior aspect or the upper aspect of the rectus. For you anatomy geeks, these attachment sites represent the insertion of the muscle. Now, the other attachment is down on the pubic bone or the pelvis here, which again, for you anatomy geeks, this is the origin. Now, for those of you who haven't taken anatomy before, origin and insertions, they're both attachment sites. The insertion attachment site is typically the more mobile. Typically, we can change that sometimes. And the origin, which was down here on Jeffrey, is typically the more fixed point when we talk about pulling point A closer to point B. So let's do this with the rubber band. You can see coming down like so, this would be the fiber orientation of the rectus abdominis. Now I want you to think about this as far as if this rubber band were to get shorter, what would happen? Now if I pull it onto me in that same orientation here, from point A to point B. Typically when this rectus abdominis, imagine I'm on the floor though you guys with my back on the floor, if this were to contract, it would pull me in this direction like so. You can see my rib cage, this attachment got pulled closer to the lower attachment of my pelvis or my pubic bone and causing what we call flexion of the lumbar spine. So as the rectus abdominis contracts, it mobilizes the lumbar spine or flexes it. So if you were to open up an anatomy book, and go to rectus abdominis and look at its function, it would, crazy, say flexion of the lumbar spine. So how do we apply that knowledge of the function of the rectus abdominis to say, like selecting exercises or workout routines to work this muscle? Now to be clear, the purpose of this video is to not give you every single exercise that you could do or these specific routines. We're gonna leave that to other YouTube channels like Athlean X. We'll put some cool links in the description to some really effective ab routines. But our purpose is to give you this idea or give you some concepts to look for in all of your ab routines to get this balanced approach to working the whole length of the muscle. And earlier I alluded to this idea of can we work the upper rectus versus the lower rectus. And yes, there's some truth to that. Although I do think it gets blown out of proportion and there's some misleading information out there almost as if the upper rectus is a completely separate muscle from the lower rectus. And clearly from our cadaver dissections, we know that's not the case but we can target certain areas of the muscle more so than others. Let me give you some examples of this. The two examples I wanna give you mobilize the skeleton differently, yet are still contracting the rectus abdominis. The first one is the good old fashioned abdominal crunch. When you do an abdominal crunch, your pelvis is fixed to the ground, and when you contract the six pack muscle, it pulls the rib cage closer to the pelvis. Now, if you compare that to another example of an exercise, let's say we wanna fix our rib cage to the ground and then pull our pelvis or roll our butt up off the ground and kind of roll towards the pelvis like a reverse crunch. So you're essentially mobilizing different parts of the skeleton with those two different exercises. Now the benefit comes from challenging the muscle at multiple joint angles by mobilizing different aspects of the skeleton or those different attachment sites, which would help create balance throughout the entirety of the muscle. Now again, don't get me wrong, either one of those exercises will fire throughout the entirety of the rectus. However, the movements that tend to mobilize the rib cage and pull it closer to the pelvis fire a little bit more into the upper rectus, whereas the movements that mobilize the pelvis and pull it towards the rib cage tend to fire more into the lower rectus. So incorporating both of those types of movements into your overall ab routine will create more of a balance throughout that muscle. And the last thing I have to say is to continually challenge yourself. 
That may sound kind of obvious. However, you want to continually to progressively overload this muscle and continue to stimulate growth. Because if this muscle gets a little bit bigger, what we call hypertrophy, it may shine through at a little bit higher body fat percentage than it would if it were a little bit smaller. And then you can also continue to work on that shrinking of the hypodermis to make it even more robust and glorious while you're frolicking on the beach or doing your personal flexathon in the mirror by yourself. Thanks for watching and sticking around to the end of our Rectus Abdominus video, everyone. So you could watch me do a shameless plug about liking, subscribing, and leaving comments below, as well as turning on notifications so you know when we drop new videos. And until next time, have fun working that wonderful six-pack muscle.